Hello, praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for tuning in again to the CLA Online Church platform. This is Fabrice from Worship and Creative Arts. We welcome you here um, online. It has been our second week without meeting physically, but God has been with us uh, throughout this season in different ways. We are exploring new things, uh, things that we did not know before. Um, we are meeting on our WhatsApp groups, on uh, CLA Radio, on our website, on social media, and even on this platform. It's God's grace, and we thank Him for technology. We thank everyone who is uh, making this uh, happen. Today is going to be even more special as we are not able to meet at all. We are all confined in our homes. But Thank God that today we will still meet, we will still worship. Nothing can stop us from worshiping God. What is going to happen today is that um, worship is going to happen from different homes. From our home here, we will be worshiping. Maya and I will be here again bringing you worship. But we'll join with Joel Jiringiro from his home and Richard Rusa from his home will be able to sing together. Isn't that amazing? It's really amazing. We'll be able to sing together, although we are not together physically. Simon Kibe will bring the word of God to us uh, this morning, and we continue with the series on stewardship, and he'll be uh, talking about stewardship of time. Before we go there, allow me to read Psalm 46. Psalm 46 from verse 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength and never present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. I love how it ends on verse 10 and 11. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Wow, wow. The God of Jacob, he is our fortress. And that is the God we worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for being God. We thank you for being who you are. You are the Almighty. And we join together as a church we join together in worship and we join together in adoration. We welcome you in this space. Come and be glorified. Come and be magnified. Come and be exalted, O oh God. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. There's no life, no death, nothing. Nothing can separate us from you, O oh King of Kings. And as we worship, come and take center stage. Come and be magnified. Come and be God. Come and be enthroned. In Jesus' name, amen. In 
the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil my anchor holds within the veil Christ sound Oh may I then in him be found dressed in his right just less alone faultless stand before the throne
our dear God, we come before you. We know that even in this season when there's so many things that are unknown, we know that you know it all. You're still God. And even in this season, we know that you will do it again. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me
unravels Lord we know that we can rest in you Lord you've never failed us yet you're faithful thank you Jesus our God and our Father we come before you this day and we want to thank you that no matter what we are facing no matter what is happening all over the world that we have peace in Christ Jesus because we are assured we are assured that in this world where there's so much trouble and trials we are assured that there is a king and there is a god who is in control of all things and father we choose to look beyond these circumstances and understand that lord in all things, in all these things, Lord, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. In all these things, we've been promised that you'll give us a peace that surpasses understanding. And so this day, I want to speak peace over the hearts of your people, Lord. There's so many questions. There's so many things that we don't know, Lord. Nobody knows what's going to happen by the end of this week. Nobody knows what's going to happen by the end of today and what we'll receive in the news, Lord. But even beyond all the disappointment and all the uncertainty, God, we choose to speak peace, Lord. Peace over our families. Peace, Lord, over the nations. Peace over the church, Lord. We pray that, God, where there is anxiety, that the peace that surpasses understanding, Lord, will flow in the hearts of those who have put their trust in you, Father. And those who have not, may this be a time of realization, Lord, that in this world we are not guaranteed anything, Lord, because there's, there's nothing that human beings can fully control. Lord, I pray that those that are still putting their hope in other things would turn to you, Lord, because you are the cornerstone. You are the hope in times of distress. You are our very present help in time of need. Lord, I pray that believers in this time, Lord, will be an example, Lord, of how to be able to face trials and challenges and the unknown, O oh God. I pray that you help us also to be a light, O oh Lord, a light, a ray of hope in this, in this situation, Lord. And we want to take time also to pray for the people that are on the front line of this battle against the virus, Lord. Father, we are not forgetting the people in the hospitals. We're not forgetting the people, Lord, that are daily fighting that battle, Lord, and they, and they have to see these things unfold before them and and they feel like they have no control lord we want to speak your peace over such people lord where they are in the hospitals all over the world lord we remember italy we remember spain we remember all the countries lord that are battling this virus lord we are praying that father god almighty the the nurses the doctors the people that are having to find answers and through, through whom you are working, Lord, to, to restore lives. I pray that you give them strength and wisdom, and, and Lord, that you renew, renew their strength, Lord, in this moment. 
Many of them are discouraged. Many of them are fearful. But we want to speak peace, Lord, over the world right now. We want to join our hearts together, Lord, as your body. And pray, Father, for a peace that surpasses understanding in this situation, Lord. Father, we want to pray for the leaders worldwide, Lord, that have to make very difficult decisions, that have to deal with a crisis, Lord, that this situation has brought on their hands. Lord, we want to pray for our very own leaders here in Rwanda, but also across the continent and in the, in, in the world at large, Lord. We want to pray that leaders across the world will look to you, Father. They will look to you because only you, Father, can give us wisdom for this situation lord and we want to pray for wisdom to make the right kind of decisions we want to pray father for our leaders to be strengthened lord as they have to to give hope to others lord we want to pray that father you will you will be their strength you'll be their pillar you'll be their cornerstone in this situation lord we want to pray for the families that are grieving lord the families that have lost their loved ones lord we want to pray over the grieving hearts, Lord. Father, I remember reading about a family in the U.S. that has lost four members. Lord, we, we cannot understand what is going on and we cannot understand the grief that the world is facing right now. But Lord, we want to join our hearts with those that are grieving right now, lifting up every heavy heart, Lord, that you, the God of our comfort, Lord, will strengthen every heart that is weary in this moment, that they will know that they're not alone in the grief, Lord, because we are in this, Lord grieving together father we pray that you give us grace to comfort one another lord we want to pray oh father for the impact the impact that this is going to have on the economies around the world oh father it's already having an impact on so many families lord that have had to close shop and and go home lord and they do not know what they're gonna feed their families the next day but Jehovah Jireh, we come before you. We know that you, you who feeds the birds of the air, the birds of the air do not, they do not farm, they do not harvest, they do not store in a barn, but Lord, you take care of them. Your eyes are on the sparrow, your word tells us, and we pray that this moment, may your eyes be upon every family, Lord, that is in need. May you raise people, Lord, to give, and may you open doors, Father, for, 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 for people to give and for people to to be able to work together to find solutions in this time. And we all pray that, Lord, that, that you provide for each one of us, Lord, our families, Lord. We know that you understand everything that we need more than we do, Father. And so we pray that you provide not only food, but also provide, Lord, comfort and strength, oh Lord, in this season, in the name of Jesus. And in all these things, Lord, we choose to give you glory because we know that you are still God. You are still God. Even in the brokenness of this world, even in the storm, Lord, we choose to lift our voices and just praise you because you are worthy of all praise, Lord. You are worthy and you will reign forever. Our God, we enthrone you. We enthrone you above this illness lord that is confusing so many of us we enthrone you above it all and we choose to give you praises lord we choose to give you praise and hold on to your promises your promises that endure forever you promise lord that you'll be with us that you'll never forsake us and we know that even in our pain even right now you are with us lord may you help us to be more aware of your presence than anything else lord even as we are listening to the news, even as we are hearing things from here and there, pray that you will help us to be aware of your presence and your promises in this season. Thank you, God, for every person, Lord, that is um, listening and watching from wherever they are. Thank you that we can be able to have fellowship as the body of Christ, no matter where we are, Lord, that there are no limitations. Thank you for technology and for everyone that you're using to make this possible, Lord. I pray that you continue to give us the ability to serve and to be able to fellowship and worship together no matter what we are facing, Lord, because you deserve our praise. You deserve our worship. We thank all of you who have been able to join in worship. We thank you and we welcome you again on this platform. At this juncture, we are going to give our tithes and offering. We thank 
the whole uh, CLA congregation for your generosity, for y your love, the love you have for the Lord. We thank you because through your giving, our church is able uh, to do outreach. Our church is able to do ministry. We thank God that this week we were able, for example, to uh, reach out to our people in Busanza, to reach out to our people in Nyabisindu. Those people have been uh, uh, in tough seasons, you know, as people are not allowed to move out of their houses. Uh, not everyone has food. So we were able to um, give, um, you know, some, some food to people uh, who are needy. And that is because of our generosity and the way we give faithfully to the Lord. So we want to encourage all of us to continue to give uh, so that the church can continue to function and the church can continue uh, to do ministry. Ministry did not stop. Ministry is continuing through various um, uh, ways of doing it. So uh, we encourage all of us to be faithful. Um, we do not give to church, we do not give to pastors, we do not give to people, but we give unto the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this time again. We thank you for um, uh, the ability uh, to make wealth. We know that it comes from you, O oh God. And today we want to give back to you what you have given to us. Lord, Thank you um, for allowing us to be part of what you are doing in your church and in your nation. Lord, we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, there will be um, numbers uh, displayed on the screen. Uh, for those who want to give online, you can transfer uh, straight from your account to the church account. You can use the mobile money option. Everything has been given uh, and provided for. Uh, please, please um, use any means which is convenient to you. Hi there, my name is Simon Kibe, a member of Christian Life Assembly, and it's an honor to be able to share God's word with you today. This message is the last of the series on stewardship. The first one was on kingdom stewardship, which covered ownership, management, accountability, and reward. The second message covered financial stewardship. And the third message, which was shared last Sunday, was on stewardship of talents. All these messages can be accessed on www.clarwanda.org. And today, we look at stewardship of time. And we are saying we need to live above the pr pressure or slavery of time. Let us go to Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 15 to 18. This is what the Bible says. Look carefully then how you walk, not as, un, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time 
because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, we are grateful for your mercy towards us today, that we are alive. And especially in these days of COVID-19, we pray that God, you would watch over everyone in Rwanda, but also in the world. And Father, we, today we draw comfort from your word. You remind us in Psalms 46 that you are our refuge and strength, and you are a very present help in time of trouble. And because of this, we will not live in fear, but we will trust you, even as we do what we are asked to do by the authorities. As we look at your word, we pray that you would open our understanding by the help of your Holy Spirit, that we may be able to understand your word and benefit from it. We thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Welcome. I'm sure most of you are at home. And therefore, I want to ask you to ask the person who may be next to you, are you a master of time or a slave of time? The letter of the Ephesians, the letter to the Ephesians was written to a large port city called Ephesus to remind the believers of what God has done for them in Christ through his grand plan for humanity and to challenge them to live their lives based on this plan and purpose. Paul wrote to expand the perspectives of his readers so that they might understand better the magnitude of God's eternal purpose and grace and come to appreciate the high goals God has for the church. You see, God never makes demands where he has not invested, as we saw in the parable of the talents. He is a just God. The letter of to the Ephesians has two parts. Chapters 1 to 3 talks about the doctrine of us being brought into God's family and being given all that we need to be able to have a sense of acceptance and belonging in Christ. The second part, which is chapters 4 to 6, details how our lives should change as a result of the great things described in the first part. One of the areas addressed is the use of time or opportunity. It is important to note that God is the creator of time and therefore the owner of time. Time belongs to him. The Sabbaths are to time what giving is to finances. But Sabbath, like as Jesus said, was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. In the same way, time was made for man and not man for time. You see, people are stewards or managers of a deposit of time given by God. And they will be held responsible for the way in which they use it. We can either, either spend our time for limited earthly existence or for what will continue into eternity. Just as we budget our financial resources to reflect our priorities, we can reset our allocation of time. We are all busy, but not all of that busy time is well spent. We may need to say no to certain demands on our time, opening our schedules to God's prompting. We can live each day anticipating the opportunities He places in our path to offer our gift of time. Does your use of time give or take life from you? You see, the Spirit empowers us to live a life that honors God through wise use of time. Managing or stewarding time instead of being managed by it avoids disappointment, disillusionment, regret, depression, or even despair. 
and we know that the things, these things lead to non-communicable diseases. Today, we look at four commitments that can help us move away from the slavery of time. The first commitment is commitment to press the pause button. And this is found in Ephesians 5.15. In this verse, the Bible tells us, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. When the Bible uses the word walk, it is us uh, talking about our life. And indeed, time is an indicator of our life. Somebody said that the picture that is created by this verse is of somebody walking among thorns. And this might seem extreme, but such a scenario calls for us to pause and consider each step we take because uh, God gave us a mind to perceive danger and avoid it. Spiritually, he has given us his word and his spirit. And, no, and not to forget sisters and brothers to help us along the way. But often, we are happy to run through the thorns of life with grave, dangerous consequences. It is important to pause before action. In creation, man was created on the sixth day. And then God rested, which means, means man begins his cycle with rest and not work. As a HR practitioner, I believe that the first day for man was a time of orientation and induction. God calls it the Sabbath, rest. We therefore, we therefore sleep and then work, and not the other way around. Our life needs to operate between pausing and working, not just for sleep, but to reflect. One of my favorite TED Talk videos is How to Get Better at the Things You Care About by Eduardo Briseno. He talks about two zones, the performance zone and the learning zone, and how it is important to alternate between these two zones. Unfortunately, many of us are always on the performance zone. And because of this, we get worse every day and end up ineffective and wasted. God requires us to pause, not only to be refreshed, but to take and consider our life in relation to his will and purpose. A story is told of early explorers in Africa who had employed a group of African carriers to go with them into the interior. Being in a hurry to reach their objective, the party was pushed relentless, relentlessly for several days. Finally, our African brothers just sat down and would go no further. Asked what was the matter, the Africans replied, we are waiting for our souls to catch up with our bodies. Although this was seen as superstitious by the foreigners, a lot of Christians who uh, a lot of Christians have run away from God into their hurry and rush for worldly things. Need to stop. A lot of Christians who have run away from God in their hurry and rush for worldly things need to stop and catch on up on spiritual things. This was shared by a Dr. F. William May. You see, we are not machines, and even machines need maintenance. Pausing helps us to reflect and ensure that we are not like a dog that is chasing its own tail with little success. If you have no time to pause, you have your priorities wrong. You may need to relook at what you do or how you do it. And I know sometimes circumstances may be beyond our control, but you can choose to trust God for a change in your situation. We have seen the importance of pausing. Pausing takes us to the next commitment, to right priority. Commitment 
to right priority. And this is found in Ephesians 5.16. This is what the Bible says. Making the best use of time because the days are evil. You see, three words hit me from this verse. The first one is best. What does that mean? The writer is not talking about good. The writer is not talking about better. The writer is talking about best. In other words, we should choose what has the greatest effect in our use of time. The second is time, and time should be seen by us as an opportunity. And last but not least, the other word is evil. We live, we are living in tough times, not just because of COVID-19. There's so much stress, there's so much poverty, there's so much disease. And I believe some of these things are driven by greed, fueled by selfish interest. Man just seeking his own. And all of us are culprits in one way or the other. See, some of us think there is no time or that God should have added the time he provided to us. Many of us have a fixed time schedule. But what we do with the discretionary time, like finances, is determined by the sort of lifestyles that we choose to live. Length of life is not really the issue here. Some people live very long lives and never accomplish anything of significance. Others live a short time and accomplish much. John Maxwell said, because activity is not necessarily accomplishment, he affirms the words of Paul when Paul says, analyze, that we should analyze our lifestyles in verse 15 of Ephesians 5. You see, we need to have the right priority in our lives. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. C.S. Lewis paraphrased this, that when you seek heaven, you'll get other than everything else that you desire thrown into it. Note, we are talking about right priority, not priorities here. For illustration, I want to refer to four Hebrew boys, youths actually, who were exiled as slaves in Babylon. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The last three were actually even given, the last three names were actually Babylonian names, showing how total their exile and enslavement was. But these four young men prioritized God in their life by refusing to eat the king's food and wine and instead chose to eat vegetables and water. I believe this wine and food had been sacrificed to idols and they did not want to defile themselves. However, despite the disadvantages they stood uh, the disadvantages of eating vegetables and water, they stood out after rigorous test. In Daniel 1.20 part B, the Bible records the king found them ten times better than their peers in every matter of wisdom and understanding because they prioritized God. Daniel, who appears to have outlived the three other young men, rose to be one of the three presidents in Babylon, the, in the Babylonian Empire, which had conquered many nations. But he still allocated time to pray three times a day, even in his own age. And because of this, he was thrown into the lion's den. But God saved him. See, when we prioritize God, it doesn't matter what will beset us. God is able to save and deliver us. He is able to rescue us. And even if he doesn't, we still have him in our lives. How do we balance our time between our various responsibilities? We need to seek God's wisdom. Another version, the New Living Translation of our text, renders these verses as follows. 
carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Be careful how you live. Make the most of every opportunity. God has given us a mind to think and we must not throw it out of the window. But spiritual wisdom goes beyond the normal and creates godly excellence, as in the life shown by Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. As I talk, there are many that are unable to talk, to work, not because they don't want to work, but because of the lockdown. And I know it's okay to restock, to stalk in order to reduce movement and contact. But I have seen videos of people turning their homes into mini supermarkets. Where is our priority? God is giving us an opportunity to bless those that may be lacking during this tough time. You see, priority helps us focus on what is impactful, but it needs to be informed by God's purpose. And that is what we look at next. Commitment to live on purpose. And not just any purpose, but God's purpose. And this is to be found in Ephesians 5.17. This is what the Bible says. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. When the Bible is talking about foolishness, it's not just talking about intellectual capability or how somebody's IQ or, uh, or lack of it. It is talking about a mentality that rejects God in their life. That's the definition of foolishness in the Bible. Anyone who decides that they are enough for themselves and they do not need God in their life is described as a fool in the Bible. The Bible is telling us to rely on Him and to depend on His purpose in this text today. The world tells us to indulge ourselves, but God says, do my will. But we must set our eyes beyond the deceptions of our culture today. We find true fulfillment when we learn what, that we have what we have been designed for and then use our time in conformity to that design. This does not mean that we need to be busier. It means that we need to carefully and intentionally use the specific time that God has given us. God's purpose is based on our lives. It's based on our lives but the, uh, God's purpose is, based, is not only based on our lives but on the need all people to come to know him and enjoy eternity with him. In Hebrews, the Bible tells us, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And we call on this because in Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Paul describes foolishness elsewhere and says that the foolishness of God, and really God has no foolishness in him, is wiser than the wisdom of man. And that's why we need God's purpose in our life. On our own, we'll be going in darkness and we'll be leading ourselves to reign. We need the wisdom of God, which is higher than the wisdom of human beings. I love athletics, and some of the most uh, some of the most fascinating races for me are the relays, the four by one hundred meters and the four by four hundred meters. I love the tension and anticipation of who will win, especially in the four by one hundred meters. Apart from running fast, the athletes have to change the batons as well as keep their lanes. Not doing so leads to disqualification, and this has been the failure of some of the fastest runners. You see, as a believer, God has enrolled you in a race, but it's not just 
how fast you run. But it's about being prudent to keep his will, the lane that he has assigned for you. Today I ask you the question, what opportunities has God recently given you to use your time for him? Ask the Holy Spirit to open your heart and mind to God's direction in this area of your life. And then act on what he shows you, depending on the context in which you are in. How are you currently using the time God has given you? Really? How? Is it just for yourself or for God and his people? The Bible reiterates, Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And when he talks about this, it goes beyond cognitive comprehension. It goes to the application of knowledge. What the Bible reminds us in Proverbs 1.7, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Job, a man who was tested and everything was taken away from him, his wife, his children, all his wealth, said these words in Job 28. He asks the question, where does wisdom come from? And then he goes to answer the question, that God knows the way to eat. He knows its place. God knows the place of wisdom. In verse 28, he says, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn away from evil is understanding. God knows the place of wisdom. God knows what you need more than you even know. None of us knows the place where wisdom stays. But the Bible tells us that God knows. How can we know God's will? We need to connect with Him by obeying what He has revealed to us, one step at a time. James reminds us that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously without reproach, and it will be given him. But he goes on to word that whoever asks comes to God seeking wisdom <clears throat> must ask it in faith with no doubting. For anyone who doubts is like the waves of the sea, tossed to and fro. And let them not think they will receive anything from the Lord. When we leave out what we are designed for, there is an assurance of power, and that is our last commitment for today. Commitment to depending on the Spirit's power. Ephesians 5, verse 18. Verse 18 says, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery or overindulgence, but be filled with the Spirit. Drunkenness leads to all sorts of evil, by people losing control of their lives. The Holy Spirit, on the other hand, keeps us grounded to God's will and purpose and helps us to be controlled through His wisdom. You see, the Holy Spirit is a person. He is gentle. He is a spirit of order. He is a spirit who gives us liberty to do God's will. And many times we think the Holy Spirit is just to have spiritual gifts that we see recorded in the Bible. But the Bible also records the Holy Spirit giving people to construct wonderful buildings. It talks of Bezalel in Deuteronomy. The Bible talks of Samson, Samson who was given supernatural strength and he became a one-man army. It talks about Solomon who was given wisdom. It talks about David who became a war hero. And there are many others whom God anointed and gave power, not just to do spiritual things, but even things that we may consider physical. One of the sites I see in Kigali is motors or motorbikes or cars stalling on the road. 
and usually the motor drivers try to tilt the motor this way and that way to try and get any little fuel that may be there to get them to the fuel station. But many times they are forced to push, either push the motor all the way to the petrol station or to look for somebody to go and get them fuel. You see, this is very similar to the story, the parable that Jesus gave of the ten virgins. Five were foolish, five were wise. The foolish ones had no oil in their lungs. And when the master came, they were found wanting. Unfortunately, today, like the, some of the motor guys and the foolish virgins, we are living on empty, pushing the motor of life, struggling. Yet God has given us the Holy Spirit to enable us to live for Him and to have the greatest impact in the area that He has given us to operate in. Apart from wine, there is so much else that is taking over people's hearts and minds and taking them away from God. The internet, great, but it has everything, good and bad. Social media, work, some men are drunk with work. Some are so drunk with power and greed. Unfortunately, our young people are drunk on drugs. You see, anything that captures your time and attention away from God sets you up for failure and eventual ruin. The Spirit can enliven even the worst of us. He is able to lift, lift us out of anything, but we must call on Him. We, today we have looked at four commitments. The commitments of posing, the commitment of priority, the commitment of purpose, and the commitment of power. All calling us to focus not on our own interest, but on that of God and His people. The biggest question today for each one of us who may be living in the slavery of time is, are you honoring God in your life by the way you are making use of time? The truth is, all of us have 24 hours, but many times our time is interrupted by many things, but there is always enough time when our time is focused on God and His people, when it is focused on loving our neighbors, on loving God, and doing that which God commands us to do. It's not the amount of time, it's the effectiveness of what we do with that time. As I conclude, I'm saddened by a situation a friend of mine was caught in last week. This friend had a chat with a friend who wanted to come into Kigali for some assignment. But then they just chatted on WhatsApp. She had a nudge to call this other friend and talk, but she was busy. She never called. The next she had was that friend had died in spite of going to a premier regional hospital. And it was not COVID-19. It was something that was so normal, which you may not even be scared about. You see, we need to use time to honor God and to bless His people in whatever situation we face ourselves, we find ourselves in. May the Lord bless you. Let us pray. Our Father, we bless you and thank you for your word to us today. We pray that God, we will master time for your glory and for the blessing of the neighbors and people you bring into our lives. In Jesus' name. It has been an honor to all fellowship and worship with all of you here on a CLA Online Church. But here comes the end of our service. Before that, let us uh, remember that 
we can stay connected via our different social media platforms, our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter, our website, our CLA radio, and all the WhatsApp groups uh, that have been created uh, to keep us together. Remember to stay safe. Uh, remember to follow strictly the directives of the Ministry of Health. Remember to stay home and save lives. Remember to uh, wash hands regularly. And remember, remember to keep the social distancing um, uh, the way it was uh, directed by the Ministry of Health, at least one meter uh, between you and the next person. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.